Greetings. What I've got for you today is a Danvos Unilynx 3.6 kW solar panel inverter, which I spotted in the recycling center in town and asked if I could take it, and yes, I could. Does it work? I don't know. Am I going to plug it in? Not a chance. This is an indoor unit, and as you can see, it has been out in the rain. It's only rated for IP21, so I'm definitely not going to plug it in to DC or AC. Uh, what we will do is have a look inside, see what we've got. Quick look around the outside first. Obviously, you've got this uh, front panel here, the, the um, programming and, and status panel. There's an on-off switch there, which doesn't feel the best. It doesn't want to swing all the way around. It gets a bit... Yeah, that's... It looks like it's meant to go all the way around, but it really doesn't want to. Oh well. On the end, let's bring this up so we can take a look. We have two sets of connectors for the DC inputs from the solar panels. So you can have two separate banks. And this is rated for between 100 and 350 volts. So probably I'd say an eight panel eight panels per, uh, per string uh, with a peak voltage of 450 volts. We've got an AC output, which is this, uh, what looks like an oddball connector, but I have seen these on another website, uh, which does solar panel inverters. So it's probably is some sort of standard connection. And uh, two RJ45 connections, which aren't ethernet, they're actually RS485. So presumably if, if you've got a whole bus of these together or if you need to do uh, linking in with your building's uh, building management system that's what you'd use those for there's no ethernet connectivity on it so that's all there is on the outside the other side just has the rating label and warning labels on it so without further ado let's crack it open this was the earth connection for the side panel this is that very much knackered switch Might be working now, I'm not sure. Wouldn't trust it for anything. And the switch provides the isolation of these input connections. With that switch off, the entire thing is dead apart from the plugs up to here. This board is just plugged in through there. This is the RS-485 board. Here's the RS-485 board close up and here's the list of ICs on it. Interesting to see that although the connection to the outside world is RS-485, internally it uses a CAN bus system, which is the sort of thing you find in, uh, in modern cars, amongst other things. So that's the front panel unit with that same Atmel processor and a small supercapacitor. Here's a close-up of the display board. As it doesn't have any component numbering, I've just made one up just for the ICs so you can see what's what. I guess a lot of that is the brains of the outfit. Over here, we've got all this heavy stuff. With two inverter units, one for each string. And if you look on the bottom of the, of the panel, you can see it can take a third string should just be a taller uh, a taller unit with the same top and bottom panels it's an interesting setup because it's actually what have we got here is this a daisy chain no it's not a daisy chain it's two separate cables but they're all Red and black indicating these are actually um, DC. Let's pop one out. These are daisy chained, and are they addressed? Yes, there's a there's a jumper which is missing on here, and present on there. So I assume that's for some sort of addressing. Maybe, maybe not, because if you had a third one, 
how would you address that unless that that may be to that could possibly be termination for the uh, for the bus so you'd have a whole chain of them and then you'd have one of those terminating at the end and that is one bus cable which goes all the way down from there to there to there and all the way up to the front panel this board then has a second connection with more pins and that goes out to the RS485 board on the front so let's try and do a deeper dive into one of these shall we there we go one board out on the underside we have a Danvos branded presumably IGBT given the, the sheer number of connections on that crikey And judging by the cooked critters in there, this thing gets quite hot. So, Danvos IGBT, a couple of big caps, great big fat toroid there, and a smaller one there. Massive, what I thought might have been a choke, but it turns out no, it is a transformer. I'll dismantle that, see what, uh, see what we've got in there now. Okay, there's that outer winding. Which is pretty beefy. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half. Pretty beefy turns. If you thought then if you thought they were beefy, um, I think the rest is strip. It's actually copper strip. There we go, for this we've got two thinner wires going to an actual foil strip. So what have we got there? That's one, two, 18 turns of that. And then to finish off, another couple of these. One, So that's that. Here's a photo of that DC to DC converter board, obviously the one I ripped the transformer off. Once again, there are no component numbers on the board, so I've made one up. There's a different controller in charge of this time, though. No, it's part of the TMS320 range. There we go. Right, and this is obviously where the mains meets the rest. So we've got some input filtering and two big relays there, which can obviously cut the, um, the the inverter away from the uh, the outside world because if the mains goes off these if and uh, for the grid tie inverters if the mains goes off they need to shut down their outputs they can't accidentally back feed into the supply so presumably that's what these are for we'll actually just turn off the um, completely isolate the the inverter from the, the outside world it looks like it's the same board whether you've got the two string or three string version so you can see we've got three connections here only two of them of course we used earlier on and you've got your AC over there and that is definitely um, DC side here coming uh, coming along there so whatever those things those boards are doing whether they're acting as sort of step up converters uh, DC to DC step up to provide a uniform supply through the whole thing I don't know but when it comes to here they all get common together onto these capacitors. These capacitors are on the sort of big DC bus. So this is where everything joins up. So this is actually gonna be the inverting stage using another great big IGBT that I have no use for. I think I've just found the reason this got thrown out. Look at the underside of this board and you'll see that one of the relay pins is scorched. Cracked solder resulting in arcing. I've seen it on power supplies in the past. In fact, Microsoft issued replacement power cables for the original Xbox because of such an issue. So it's not beyond the realm of possibility. Anyway, here's the obligatory photo and IC list. As you can see, it's got the same processor as the DC to DC converter boards. Another TMS320. Here's we'll take a look at this switch. There's a spring in there. Well, in fact, there's two springs in there. 
for selecting the two positions. And then we have, okay, let's see what else is in here. Oh, this whole this whole shaft like another shaft inside she doesn't want to come all the way out so let's take these stacks apart what's in there nothing great big contact Another big contact. Now that wouldn't have fared too well. You can see the um that's probably why it wasn't spinning properly. Let's compare with this one. You're supposed to have these two solid discs. That one is clearly all chewed up. So that's why it only spun part way around. So that didn't help. In fact, there's the, there's the chewed up bits. And that's that. Now then, given what we've gleaned from the parts list, do you reckon it might be possible to power it up? I'm not going to try it on the mains, but I can try feeding the boards directly by wiring to the low voltage regulators. The big boards each have their own onboard power supply with separate outputs for the three regulators. If I connect to the regulator inputs, I might be able to get some life out of them. The small boards are a different matter. They've got regulators, but running a low voltage supply, isolated from all the rest. I've poked around with the multimeter and on the interconnecting cables, ground appears to be the blue wire and gray is some sort of supply wire. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's wired up. This power supply is connected to all the regulators on these. This power supply is running that separate output for this and this. At the moment, they're both set for three volts. So let's switch on, see what happens. If anything, and that's woken up. You just adjust the filter on the camera. There we go. Let's try turning this up. Well, these are doing something now. We've got the flashing red light on there and there's a red status light there. This is just sitting here pouting at the moment. And that needed, how much did that need? That's running at about five volts. These are running at about 13.8. Right, this is now connected with that out of the loop and the other boards out of the loop. It's just this on the other bus connection uh, linked to here and you can see it's still uh, please wait and nothing else. So I think that's as far as we're going to get with this thing. Um, it's no use to me anyway. I think I'm, I'll just scavenge a few bits and pieces off it and send the rest back to the recycling centre. So uh, I hope someone found bits and pieces of this video interesting. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon.